Hey Cookies, Pav here. Hey Cookies. morning cookies. I hope everybody's doing well today. I'm pretty excited because today we're going to read another poem by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. And if you recall a couple weeks ago, I posted a poem by the same author. It was a short little thing um, called Dawn and it was about Angel like waking up the day and all that stuff. Um, super cool poem. And this is actually a very different poem by Dunbar, but it shows just as much literary skill and applies just as much figurative language. So as I'm reading it, I really want you to think about the metaphor here, okay? Um, Paul Lawrence Dunbar is gonna be talking about a mask that is worn by a group of people. And I want you to think about what that mask is about. What does he mean by that? Is it a literal mask? No, it's not. He didn't live in 2020 and go to the grocery store. So he wasn't wearing a literal mask. This is a figurative mask, all right? So think about that. I want to tell you a little bit about the author this time. Uh, he's really an interesting person. He lived in the late 1800s and early 1900s. He was the child of freed slaves. So just one generation removed from that experience of Frederick Douglass that we read about. And he went to school in Ohio. He went to an all white school. And you know who one of his classmates was? I don't remember if it was Orville or Wilbur. I think it was Orville. One of the Wright brothers. Do you guys know who the Wright brothers are? You know, the people who did the first airplane? You can, if you go to Washington, D.C., you can actually see their airplane in the Smithsonian. He, he was in the same class as one of the Wright brothers. Wouldn't that be cool if, like, more than one of you, like, ended up being, like, historical? I, it could totally happen. Just make sure you give credit to your eighth grade English teacher. All right. So... Dunbar didn't just write poetry. He wrote essays, he wrote short stories, he wrote novels, and he received international credit and acclaim for the work that he did. Probably was one of the first, not probably, I think he really was one of the first African-American authors to get um, the credit that he got for his skill and for his ideas. The other thing that he did first was write about the experience of being black in America um, while not being enslaved. So in other words, like, you know, Frederick Douglass, he lived that life of a slave. Whereas Paul Lawrence Dunbar was talking about the ongoing experience, the interactions and the feelings and the experiences that continued happening even after slavery was officially abolished. He wrote about that experience. And I think that's an experience that we still talk about in our country. So he was kind of one of the first voices to do so. There's a couple tough vocab words in this poem. Um, can you guys repeat after me? I wish I could hear you repeat after me. I'm just gonna imagine it. Um, can you repeat after me? Myriad, myriad. So in the poem, we're going to read um, mouth with myriad subtleties. So myriad is just a, like a ton, a lot, a whole bunch, okay? Um, and you can say something like you have a myriad of, what could you have a myriad of? Ideas, or you could just say I have myriad ideas. Um, M-Y-R-I-A-D, I love that word by the way. Love to see you guys using that word. Um, in that sentence I read you, there's also the word subtleties. Um, a sub when something is subtle, it means it's not obvious. So a subtlety is something that, you know, maybe someone's expressing, but they're not being like super overt or obvious about it, okay? In other words, they're not being an eighth grader. Okay, what other words in this poem do I wanna go over with you guys? Oh, guile, can you repeat after me? Guile, guile. So that is G-U-I-L-E. So someone who has guile is cunning. Oh, 
we had the word beguiling, right? Guile is within beguiling. So if somebody has guile, um, they kind of, they're sharp and they're um, compelling and they kind of know how to get what they want and need. Um, sometimes the word guile has the connotation of being a little bit sneaky, not in a good way, but other times, depending on how it's being used, it is kind of a compliment, like, whoa, that guy's sharp. Okay? All right, so those were just a couple vocab words I wanted to go over. Um, I'm gonna read you the poem. It's also today's assignment, today's Wednesday, yellow assignment, um, that I'm gonna post on Google Classroom. I'm gonna have you read the poem yourself and answer the questions on Common Lit. And we'll be working with this poem again later. Um, and I also wanted to read it aloud to you because that way you can hear how the words are pronounced and all that kind of stuff. Okay, kiddos. So it's called, We Wear the Mask. And again, the author is Paul Lawrence Dunbar. And I want you to think about the metaphor of the mask. We wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guile with torn and bleeding hearts, we smile and mouth with myriad subtleties. Why should the world be overwise in counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us well. We wear the mask. We smile, but O oh great Christ, our cries to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing, but oh, the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile. But let the world dream otherwise. We wear the mask. All right, kiddos. See you on classroom. Miss you. Bye.